By the end of this video, you'll know how to finish off the simple plastic part that we started in part one. Hey there, it's Kevin Kennedy, and welcome to the Product Design Online YouTube channel, where I demo all things Fusion 360. If you're new here, be sure to hit that red subscribe button and go ahead and comment below and let me know what you plan on using Fusion 360 for. Welcome back to Sculpting for Plastics in Fusion 360. This video is part two, so if you haven't watched part one, then click the link down below in the video description or hit that info icon in the upper right hand corner. In part one, I sculpted the plastic shell and I demoed the difference between the thickness commands that are available. Let's now finish off this plastic shell by adding some ribs and webs to the plastic part. Before we get started, you'll want to make sure your plastic cover component is activated. If it's not, you can simply hover your mouse cursor over the component name and select the Activate Component icon. To start off, I'll use the view cube to look at the bottom of the model. The first thing I'm going to add is some rectangles on each end where the shell snaps into the doorbell chime. Then we'll use the rib command to reinforce the extruded rectangle. I'm going to right click on the edge of the shell and I'll select create sketch to create a new sketch on the face of this edge. First, I'll draw a line from the inner edge heading over to the right, which we'll use to set the distance for the rectangle. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima to activate the line command. Then, before I draw the line, I'll activate the construction option in the sketch palette because we're using this solely for dimension purposes. I'll click on the inside edge for the first point of the line, drag over with my mouse, and I'll type out 25 millimeters for the distance, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And I'll click to set the line. I'll now hit the keyboard shortcut letter R as in Romeo to activate the rectangle command. I want to use the center rectangle, so I'll select the center rectangle option from the sketch palette, and I'll be sure to click on the construction option to make sure that construction is turned off. I'll click on the endpoint of the line and I'll drag out with my mouse. I'm going to type out 20 millimeters for the height followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. And I'll type out three millimeters for the width, followed by the tab key to lock the dimension in place. Then I'll click to set the rectangle in place. At this point, we'll want to extrude this rectangle down to the surface body of the shell. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E as in echo to activate the extrude command. I'll select the rectangle and I'll drag the blue directional arrow down. We want this to actually start at the shell surface. So to do this, I'll select two object for the extent type. Then I'll select the surface that we want the extrude to run to, which in this case is the inside face of this plastic shell. Now this plastic piece doesn't actually come up as high as the edge of the plastic shell. So we'll want to change the start option to the offset plane. Then I'll change the offset distance to 20 millimeters. And if it's heading in the wrong direction, I'll have to add the negative sign in front of the dimension. And I'll click OK in the extrude dialog box. This plastic piece standing alone by itself would be pretty fragile, whether it was injection molded or even if it was 3D printed. So we'll want to add a rib to the back side of it. In order to add a rib, we'll first need to create some sketch geometry that the rib command requires. In order to look at this model from the front or back views, we'll want to get this outside edge of the plastic shell out of the way. To do this, I'm simply going to turn on the section analysis so we can look at only half of the model. I'll select the Section Analysis option from the Inspect drop-down list. Then, you'll see the Section Analysis requires a face, 
So we can either select a face of the model, or you can always use the construction planes or origin planes. In this scenario, I'll simply select the side of this plastic piece and I'll click OK in the Section Analysis dialog box. Now you'll see that we can work on the inside of the model without this outer edge being in the way. Now I want the rib to be in the center of this piece to provide the best reinforcement. So I'm going to create a sketch off the XZ origin plane. I'll toggle open the origin folder in the Fusion 360 browser, and I'm going to right click on the origin plane and select Create Sketch. And I'll flip the model back around using the rotate arrows next to the view cube. Once again, I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter L as in Lima to activate the line command. For the first point, I'm going to click at the top of the rectangle and I'll make a line going down 5 millimeters. Then I'm going to create the line that the rib command will actually reference. One important thing to note is that the rib command doesn't actually require a line that's touching the surface you want the rib to touch. I can set this line at 125 degrees by typing that out in the degree input field, and then I'll hit the tab key to lock it in place. Then I'll simply click to place the line anywhere. And I'll hit the escape key on my keyboard to exit the line command. I'll now activate the rib command from the create dropdown list. I'll select the line that I just created and I'll type out 3 millimeters for the rib thickness. As I type out the thickness, you'll see that the rib is created and it runs all the way to the edge of the plastic shell without us needing to create a line that touches the surface. I'll double check that the thickness option is set to symmetric since I created this line directly in the middle of this extruded rectangle. The next option in the dialog is the depth options. Now this defaults to the to next option, which essentially means that the rib is going to hit the next surface of our reference line and then the surface in the other direction, which in our case is the plastic wall that we have. However, in some scenarios, you may not want the rib to be completely solid. If you change this option to depth, you'll see that you can set the depth. For example, I'll type out 3 millimeters and notice the hole or cavity that is now present. Lastly, you'll see that you can flip the direction as sometimes you'll create a rib and based on the reference geometry you select, the rib may be running in the wrong direction. Before clicking OK, I'm going to change the depth options back to to next, and I'll make sure that the rib is flipped the correct way. Then I'll click OK. Now I want this part to be on the other end of the plastic shell as well, so I'll use the mirror command from the create dropdown list, which is not to be confused with the sketch mirror command that's located in the sketch dropdown list. For the pattern type, I'll select the features option, which will allow us to select the extrude and the rib features in the timeline below. Then for the mirror plane, I'll select the YZ plane, and I'll click OK to confirm the mirror. If you ever want to get rid of your section analysis, you'll simply need to select the light bulb icon in the Fusion 360 browser. It's located to the left of the analysis folder. And if I toggle this folder open, you'll see it labeled section, and you can turn this specific analysis on and off in case you have other analysis options that you've turned on with your model. The next thing we need to do to this plastic shell is create some slots on the sides for the sound to leave the doorbell chime. I'm going to leave my section analysis on for now, and once again, we'll focus on just the side that's showing, and then we'll mirror the results to the other side. To start off these slots, I'm going to create an offset plane that's closer to the edge of this plastic wall, because I can't create a sketch directly on this outer surface since it was originally sculpted and didn't result in a perfectly flat surface. I'll select the offset plane option in the toolbar, and I'll select the XZ origin plane to offset from. And I'll make the distance about 50 or 60 millimeters, and I'll click OK. 
I'll right click on the plane and select New Sketch. I'm going to start off by using the center point slot command from the sketch dropdown list. And if you're not familiar with these different slot commands, then click that info icon in the upper right hand corner and I'll link to a video where I cover all five slot commands. As I create these slots, I'm going to make the styling a little bit different than the original product that I reference because I want to focus on teaching you guys the web tool and a few other tricks. So I'm just going to click on this Y axis slightly above the middle of this sidewall and I'll drag my mouse to the left. I'll type out 50 millimeters for the distance followed by the tab key and I'll click to set this first line. Then, as I drag my mouse cursor out even further, you'll notice that the slot now appears. So you can see just how powerful these slot commands can be. You can create the shape with just a few clicks of the mouse. I'll make the height 12 millimeters, and I'll click the Enter key on my keyboard to place the slot command. I'll hit the keyboard shortcut letter E as in echo to activate the extrude command, and I'll select the slot profile. I'm going to change the extent type to the all option, and then I'll make sure that the operation is set to cut, and you can hit the flip icon if yours is heading in the wrong direction. And then I'll click OK. Now that we have an open slot, we'll want to create a web or vent with some reference geometry. Similar to the rib command, the web feature will let us create geometry based on the thickness we set, and the nice thing is that we can use open or closed geometry. We'll first want to create some simple lines that we can reference with the web tool. In order to create the reference geometry, we'll want to create a construction plane that runs through the slot that we just cut out. I'll select the plane through three points construction plane from the construct dropdown list. As the name suggests, we'll have to select three points. I'm going to simply select the bottom two points and then one of the points at the top. I'll click OK and you'll see that it created a nice flat construction plane that's close to the slot. I'll now right click on the construction plane in order to select Create Sketch. In this new sketch, we'll want to use the line command to draw the reference geometry for the web tool. I'm going to activate the line command from the sketch dropdown list, and I'm just going to create two horizontal lines. And I'll also create a few vertical lines, and this is where you can really experiment with the results of the web command and just how complex you want your vent to be. At this point, we'll want to activate the web tool from the create dropdown list. Similar to the rib command, we'll need to select the sketch geometry that we set up for it. So I'll select each of these lines. I'll make sure the thickness option is set to symmetric, so the thickness is applied to each side of each line, and I'll type out 2 millimeters for the thickness. As you can see, the web sticks way outside past the plastic shell, which we obviously don't want. You'll notice in the depth options that we unfortunately don't have an option that will work well with curved surfaces. At this time, the web tool in Fusion 360 is somewhat limited. So we'll have to complete the web command as is, and then I'll show you a little trick that you can use to clean up this model. I'm going to set the depth options to the depth option, and I'll set the depth value to five millimeters, and then I'll click OK. Now we also want this vent to be on the other side of the shell body, so we're going to use the mirror command before we clean up the extra parts the web created. I'll select the mirror command from the create dropdown list, and I'll change the pattern type to features. Then I'll need to select the extruded slot and the web tool in the timeline below. For the mirror plane, I'll select the XZ origin plane, and then I'll click OK. If I turn off the section analysis and look at the model, you'll see that we have the slot and the web on both the left and right sides. 
So let's go ahead and clean it up. To clean up these extra parts, we're going to use the split body tool that's located in the modify dropdown list. For the body to split, I'll select the main plastic shell body. Then for the splitting tool, we're going to use the original surface body that we created when we sculpted this object in part one. To select the surface body, we'll have to toggle open the bodies folder in the Fusion 360 browser and select the first surface body. If I now hit the OK button, you'll see that cleaned up the extra details of the web command, giving us a nice vent feature on the plastic shell. To wrap up this video, let's talk about a few more things you'd want to consider if you were to actually be injection molding this. First off, you'd want to run the draft analysis to analyze the model and see what areas of the model, if any, could be a concern when the part exits the mold. This inside of the web part could also potentially be a concern, so it may be worth some time to add some ribs to the inside of these sidewalls to not only reinforce the webbing, but the sidewalls of the plastic shell as well. You may also consider adding fillets to each of these web details, giving them a softer appearance. If you made it to the end of this video, then please comment below and let me know if you'd like me to continue making sculpting related tutorials. And maybe I'll make some that go further into sculpting and refining the shapes. In the meantime, be sure to click that playlist in the lower right hand corner to watch some other beginner sculpting tutorials and click that thumbs up icon if you enjoyed this tutorial. And last but not least, be sure to click that red subscribe button followed by that little bell icon to be notified of more Fusion 360 tutorials.